Everybody, Brian here from quantlabs.net. I uh, just wanted to let you know uh, with my most recent uh, video I just put up, I'll just show it to you just in case you need to know. Quant Labs uh, YouTube channel. Just come under here under videos. Uh, um, we we're talking about is Bloomberg chart data source the true secretive uh, to lucrative trading, I believe. Yep. About All right, so somebody sent this in uh, from who's part of my membership. Big thanks to them for contributing these ideas. But this will just drill down my theories on things when it comes to Bloomberg. As you know, I do my uh, daily analysis. Just go over to my Instagram account. No, I'm not putting up photos of myself in bikinis on beaches. Uh, stupid crap like that I actually put up even more dumb charts <clears throat> almost 13,000 of them that actually um, and these are very useful for me um, and I think 500 plus other people th seem to think so too which is not bad all right so thanks to this person uh, it's opened up an entire different way of approaching this uh, what I'm thinking so we have the training booklet for the terminal service for those that don't know I mean Bloomberg is the premier way to analyze the markets that's what the professionals do yes there is Reuters I just don't think it comes as close so I'm just gonna go through this um, uh, manual here this training manual and there's some very interesting items here now you could easily download this from one of the universities I think there's this one I got it's actually sent to me but you can get the uh, want this one from Scranton so the sections you just skipped are all the signing up and just overview of how to use this stuff so this is one of the main menus uh, they just go on about talking about using it but here's the interesting thing Bloomberg has uh, the set of keys or a key special keyboard with that's color-coded with all the fun stuff now here is the interesting part um, we have sections on the different types of instruments or securities portfolio management currency index commodities equities preferred stock municipal bonds money market mortgages corporate bond and government so um, we have a news button now what I plan to do is just want to show you where I can get the same information some of it is proprietary out of uh, Bloomberg uh, called Bloomberg intelligence um, but you could somewhat get that through the news app um, but the thing is that this through the terminal service will come out probably hours ahead of uh, what's put up on their website and, and, and into the news app which is fine but um, that's more for impact of um, intraday trading so what I'm trying to do is focus more on the long-term trading for now um, so that's my focus or that's my approach so but anyways here's a general news now you can usually get news from your broker or even if you choose to use IQ feed because they, that's part of the basic core service so that is that um, then we get into uh, I guess news search I mean market watch and all these other ones you can get online through that now the the events calendar is very important because these are sort of things that will um, highlight uh, some major econometric news throughout the world and can have a like a big impact on the markets wherever the news is coming out of can impact that let's say that stock market um, and the trading relationship I'll show you some really cool stuff that I don't think you can get anywhere else outside of here on the Bloomberg uh, terminal but I'll, I'll, I'll try to figure out if there's alternatives that you can use so in here we have events so we, we can break down the events obviously by um, uh, okay I guess these are the sources uh, so here you got Bloomberg TV live broadcast and these are the events I guess on these uh, news outlets so here's the one I was talking about Bloomberg intelligence and I think this is what you're really paying for when it comes to uh, Bloomberg's proprietary news coverage which is quite good actually uh, so we got earnings industry trends key industry metrics so on and so forth 
But I do believe that there are some uh, some uh, sources that you can go to get the si similar or better yet, if you watch um, the video I just highlighted here, uh, my theories on how you can probably build up your own set of algorithms and maybe even a database that can do the equivalent, but it's just essentially uh, recording, I guess, or, or logging what uh, is being uh, put in uh, or coming out of the Bloomberg News app. So it's the same approach, I would imagine. Now, the here, here's an interesting way of approaching it. So let's say you want to get some interesting information on the airline industry. Obviously, this is what traders do, look for trends that will impact um, uh, the stocks for certain companies or maybe companies that have a, a trade relationship with that company or a supply or something that will, like it's basically a value chain where one comp one news event will impact another industry and or company. And I'll show you some examples later on in this PDF. So obviously you really can't get a whole lot of information out of this uh, public. You probably could, but I'm going to be honest. I'm not really interested in trading the micro uh, just do the fact that I think there's just bigger market securities out there like gold, oil, that have m more uh, wide movements uh, that I'm after. Not the little micro stuff here, like in some little, at a micro level of an industry. So just my view on that. So here, obviously, we have uh, some autocomplete. And... Uh, Continuing along, equities I'm not too uh, really interested in, On again, on the micro level, but I am interested in the, uh, let me just deal with this. Yeah, so like I was saying, uh, the equities as well, but I'm more interested in indexes as, as the ones that are listed here. For instance, obviously S&P 500, Dow Jones, the FTSE 100, uh, so on and so forth. Also, this is a really good one. Um, now, you can easily get these publicly through uh, a, a good source like the uh, IQ feed, um, depending upon the area uh, of the world that you want to trade on um, by region or even a region within um, maybe based upon a sector or size of the, um, the stocks or whatnot. So here is an interesting one. These are the performance overall of a particular, um, particular industry or sector. Now, if you want my opinion, the best tool for this, with this kind of is using a, a charting, sorry, a stock uh, a spreadsheet using SLQ. With, X, with, with IQ Feed as your data source, you could easily analyze it this way through a spreadsheet or a worksheet that they have as a demo in XLQ. So you can easily, that already exists, right? So here um, we can see performance. Wow, distractions, distractions. All right, so here we have uh, our most, uh, our, our are, you know, you can see here, largest volume movers change up, down, 52-week high, low. You can somewhat get that again through XLQ. There's also uh, the, the program that I've talked about in my books, uh, JSTOC, as well. You can get all that information through that software. JSTOC uses uh, Yahoo real-time data. So as long as they continue providing the real-time data from Yahoo Finance, you should be able to use um, JSTOC as well, and that's free. Um, and I've talked about that as well. Um, so these screeners are really, really powerful. Uh, let me just see here if there's anything. Yeah, you know, like, but, but I don't know. I, I'm kind of mixed on these because uh, this is good for uh, confirming your your, uh, your 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 trading ideas, as I've talked about. In that uh, previous video I, I mentioned here, uh, this one. Okay. Um, so here is the equity screener. Again, this is where XLQ is really, really good. Um, the spreadsheet. 
um, from XLQ. They have some worksheets for this exact um, capabilities. If not, you can generate them through XLQ, uh, which is obviously built on Excel. More Excel screeners. Um, again, you probably want to use IKeyFeed as your data source using XLQ. You can get some really good stuff in there uh, as well. Results. Um, see here, it's really important to pay attention to uh, the data itself within the stocks. So where it just was in here, the important factors that are really important that are determined uh, for really good picks is price to earning um, ratio. EPS is a huge one as well. Uh, it doesn't matter on, on the frequency of it, quarterly, monthly. Uh, you always want to use that forward-looking data. Market cap's another big one. Just do the fact you want to choose big companies. You don't want to choose some dinky little company that's not going to be able to uh, give you fast fills because the liquidity is just not there. Revenue is another big one, not just on the market cap, but also revenue is a big important one. Um, and uh, again, you can get all that through the Excel queue. I've, I've built actually my own Python scripts to do that. And then that will <coughs> actually interface with uh, IK feed as well. I'm just dropping hints here. If you do trade stocks, like specifically around pair trading, that's the sort of stuff you want to use those, those technical, um, sorry, I guess fundamental data. Now here it's where it gets interesting, the fundamental analysis. Um, so here we can do an analysis on Apple, uh, security, blah, 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 research, business intelligence, legal, equity, valuation, line charts, company events, Bloomberg quote, blah, blah, blah. Um, I'm not sure if this is really uh, useful a whole lot. Uh, you know, obviously you have some interesting things in here. Uh, out of this, uh, obviously, I said the EPS is the really important one. Uh, price earning is also pretty good. Market cap, shares, floats. I'm not sure if that will really impact your trading. And then here, your beta performance against the SPX as, as a benchmark. Um, very important because you, you want to only trade those that give you a beta of more than one, as you know. Again, uh, ratios, market cap, um, these, price to earning, price to book, price, uh, price, was it price to share? Can't remember, or I don't know, I'm no expert here. But some of these are important uh, for the fundamentals. But the ones I think that are important I've already mentioned, uh, prior revenue, EPS forecasted, re that forecasting is a critical one. Um, you may be interested in the regional sales of certain products, but uh, you may not get this level of detail in all companies. So that's why EPS is just pretty well your best gauge. Uh, earnings, announcements, analysis, analysts. I think having the schedule of these earnings is really important um, because those are the dates that those come out. Um, if there's a source for that, if you do want to trade stocks, um, because there are people out there that will trade on reports, um, which is probably pretty smart, actually. And if you can make a, a call on which way that stock's going to go based upon uh, what they project and their guidance, um, you could do quite well. Uh, again, here, uh, single security between competitors or a single security. So you could compare Apple to Samsung on a quarterly basis based upon their, their sales. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm, I guess that's pretty important. Um, I'm not, again, I think it's just, what I just mentioned is probably your most important. Historical pricing. I mean, personally, I don't really pay attention to what happened yesterday. I mean, it's important to understand their performance, but I just think that all of, your really critical stuff is, is your guidance, your earnings price per share, um, and uh, current beta and things like that, market cap. Dividends, I don't, I mean, I don't have any interest in generating dividend income for myself. 
ownership geographic no uh, I think these are uh, analysts uh, reports you know from what I've learned um, oh, uh, including option exercise buy sell so if these are from particular analysts I, I've been informed multiple times from multiple sources what analysts put out there is just for lazy people that don't really understand how to trade and they just rely on some analyst uh, which is usually wrong, a lot of them. That's why you need to do your own research, I think. And then again, here we have the breakdown on shares and who's buying what. Um, analyst rep uh, reports, I'm not even going to look at that. <laughs> Relative valuation is pretty important. Um, so here, EPS, price to earning, revenue, uh, return on equity, and change in percentage. I think those are important. Um, but there's some interesting things in here that will help you build out your valuation on the company so you can determine if it's a cheap buy or a, um, an expensive buy. I mean, obviously, technical indicators help as well, like the RSI or things like that. Supply chain, this is the one that's really proprietary. Um, as I said, that's part of the value chain. I'm not sure if this is proprietary too. Bloomberg themselves, but this, if you had this information, you, let's say for instance, if you know Apple's going to do well, obviously a good way that I've seen, um, on if Apple's going to do well a quarter out or even on a six months out, you can generally, uh, figure out who their suppliers are, uh, for let's say the orders of an upcoming iPhone. And if you know those parts suppliers, you could figure out what they're ordering. You could figure out what their plans are for the upcoming release of iPhone. Because they have to, Apple has to dictate to these companies, the suppliers, on how many phones to produce. So these companies have to go out and um, put orders in for the parts and components that they need for, uh, for, for, for the new iPhones, let's say. So it's just a good example of how the supply chain, the value chain is really important throughout the whole process of manufacturing an iPhone. That's just one example. Uh, car industry is another good example uh, because there's steel. The price of steel will impact um, the next quarter out for, for car manufacturers. And that's all determined by how the economy is. So car manufacturers will project how many cars to produce based on the economy and they'll put out their orders for, for, for the steel that they need to produce those cars. Just as another example, same with oil uh, and other maybe industry metals as well, like copper or nickel, to, to, to watch those. And those are six months out, four months out. And you can watch that on a forward, uh, forward-looking basis. And I don't know why people don't ever think like that, but... That's the difference between the profitable guys and, and, and those that just kind of like, as they say, uh, chase things on charts. Pure product correlation. Now, here's an important one. Correlation is really important because you could you could judge on how how if a pro if if a certain companies correlate with each other, which obviously becomes or an arbitrage or a pair. Pair, a pair trade, and if you're going to pay, uh, uh, pair trade or even trade on a uh, more complicated way in, in um, a three-way trade, um, but they do it. That's what the pros do. So you can see these kind of relationships, you know, how, how the revenue may impact versus Nike with Under Armour. Okay, so technical analysis is another big one. Now, let's uh, just give me a second here. Uh, okay, so this is obviously a, a critical one. My view of technical analysis is really simple. Technical analysis is fine, but what we're looking for using this type of service or these type of data points or data sets is generating trading ideas to set up tra a trading plan or a set of trading positions. And if we can, as I've said in my that previous video I mentioned, if you can find ways to automate these kind of relationships, uh, you can do really well in the markets. So technical analysis will never give you those, to generate those ideas. It gives you confirmation on things and it's really good for timing. So technical analysis has its place. I just think over time, it's just been abused by 
gurus or whatever to think that you can do well in trading. And maybe you can, uh, but again, if, if the markets are in, in range bound or even in a falling knife situation, technical analysis I just don't think is gonna do a whole lot for you because momentum, you, you could have a monkey throw darts at a board and you could still, and that monkey could probably still make money. Um, so here's some of the important uh, uh, indicators. Obviously, list the popular ones. Um, so you can see here, take note of these because these are really important. Um, moving average, parabolic, rate of change, RSI, moving average, stochastics. And these are the popular ones. And then, of course, you've got other ones as well uh, in here. And there, there's, there's virtually dozens of them. But I do find these these are pretty interesting. So again, with the charting, you can easily um, build out the volume, and you're, you know, you're 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 definitely used to this. And there's countless um, uh, tools out there. Uh, Python with Matplotlib is a good one. If you're looking for live charting, I don't think you'll get too far with with Python. Uh, if you want that, you could use C plus plus with Nuplot. Uh, you could also, I think Java's come along with the new Java effects for charting live. If you want to go dot the dot net route, that's fine too. Um, but uh, I mean, you really, really want my opinion? Just use your broker of software. I mean, that's what it's for, right? And you focus on building out the algorithms and the, the order maintenance and order uh, management of, of that, of between the, the scripts or the programs that you build that have the trading rules to execute the trades. That's what you focus on. All this stuff is all fine and good, but visualizations is, I would just use the broker software for that. And there's other third-party softwares out well you can use. Okay, so here we uh, goes on about custom charts and blah, blah, blah. I mean, uh, one other big one I forgot to mention is obviously MATLAB. MATLAB's brilliant at this. Uh, it's right out of the box. A lot of the toolboxes enable you to do this stuff. So that's another really good option as well. Because I was just playing with uh, um, the latest version of MATLAB, and I'll tell you, uh, MATLAB's come a long way, um, making it real easy. We don't have to worry about coding and all that. Um, this is out of the box. But, and then again, even R is probably always forgotten about as well. So you have those, and they've and the R packages, are pretty good, like um, what's called ggplot and some other ones that are very good for charting and visualization. So again, this is stuff uh, you could get in a variety of different scripts and programming uh, environments or even third-party software. Okay, let me just make sure I'm not missing anything here. Okay, so these are the charts. You can build your own custom charts within the Bloomberg terminal, which is which is good. And this is where all your trading ideas come from. Uh, blah, blah, blah. I mean, even with uh, uh, IPython, no, uh, Jupyter from, uh, it's part of the, 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 the Python um, environment stuff. And there, there's some good stuff in there as well for this. Okay, so, okay, so there's all this. So fixed income. Fixed income is really important. People, I don't know how people forget about this, like watching bonds and treasuries and corporates, mortgage bonds and municipal bonds, we, we will never be able to um, afford. I mean, as a retail, unless somebody out there has got billions upon billions of dollars that they're not telling me about. But <laughs> uh, I just discovered another guy, um, he's part of my group I didn't even know, but he's part of my uh, group. And uh, he's pretty high up in a large HFT firm, very high. I was kind of surprised, but we're not going to mention names here, but uh, quite surprised on the people I have in the group. Anyways, um, fixed income, important. I find that the treasuries and, and the government bonds, specifically coming out of the uh, ECB, Japan, uh, and specifically U.S., because that's what's going to really, really impact markets um, and you really need to understand the econometrics of it as well as all the different important stats to to know what's important to, to what it, that will impact stuff so you can see here we can go through all this we will never trade these but these are important to understand and how they will impact your trading and everyone else's trading in terms of 
headline news. I talked to one guy who thought he was a trader, and I asked him some questions to quantify this or that. I was quite surprised. He just doesn't know what he's talking about, who spent probably thousands of dollars in education and still didn't know what he was talking about. Um, so there is this stuff. There's nothing really... I mean, the spreads on the yield analysis is pretty important. And I, I post a lot of that on my Bloomberg, uh, on the Instagram, but people just don't pay attention to it. Don't ask me why. I don't really care about it. But, oh, well, life goes on. Uh, again, world bond here. Here's the important ones. Uh, Treasury, two-year, five-year for the U.S. And I guess Canada would be second most important. The other big ones, obviously, the U.K., uh, France, Germany, maybe, and then of course Japan's a big one. And China, if they, if you trust what comes out of China. So here's the breakdown on on one specific. The the yield curves, which are really important. Inflation's another big one. The CDS spread, which I just learned last week. If you, you too bad you weren't part of my uh, quant analytics. That actually that was. Uh, I learned that from a, a VP at a bank. Uh, it was quite interesting. I, I, I know of it, but I just didn't know how to use it. Now I do. But here it is as, as an important element of what you would use that will impact the markets a few months down. And I just learned that. Pretty cool stuff. Anyways, um, here's the other one. Treasury and money markets. Because the money markets are supposed to be the most liquid out there. Um, and if the money markets start to freeze up as they did in 08, 09, you are in a world of hurt. And uh, that's when the government basically uh, created that uh, program, uh, TARP, was it? And uh, yeah, because all this all froze up, all this stuff that you're seeing here. So here, what we're looking at is the bid and ask, LSI, open, high, low. Again, I think you can get all this information through... IQ feed, I can't confirm that. Again, here, uh, important elements, and if you want to watch this in real time, the spot on the Forex, the, the critical ones, the big six, uh, key rates, swaps. I don't really pay attention to them, but again, I need to confirm if I can get this out of um, the uh, guys over at uh, IQ feed. So here we have the, the calendar release stuff. Uh, money markets, I guess, on the euro deposits, which is the euro dollar, is very important. Uh, composite index, uh, commercial paper. Uh, again, the commodities is important. So I guess this is kind of like a, a rough dashboard on what's going on that typical retail t traders will never really follow. And here's the... Futures market, the LIBOR. LIBOR is important because that's how banks finance their interchain, interbank relationship. Because if this freezes again, no different in the money market with a LIBOR, you got a lot of big problems. The municipality, is it, I, I can never say this, municipal, yes, municipal, municipal bond spread. No, I, I'm wrong on that. That I'm not sure. MBS, hmm. Look into that. And again, as I said here, all these events <clears throat> will directly impact the markets. Fed funds, pressure, previous announcements, headlines. So I think we can get access to this because this is, this is public information. And then there are people out there that will try to trade what will happen on Fed calls and Fed reports. Security Finder again, uh, Universe. Uh, I don't think we can really do a whole lot there. Clicking on first bond. Okay, so we have uh, analytics, fixed income, horizon. So some of these are the larger ways to trade. Okay, I'm going to skip that. Uh, well, I think it is important. Okay. So we have description here. This gives relevant about particular bonds selected. Okay. Maturity. Hmm. It's good to know this. 
and good to have scripts that enable you to see it like this. Yield and analysis spread. Spread price yield. Risk hedge. Convexity. Really important metrics here. ASW. Very interesting. Okay, I think these are the news events. Yep, news events, which again, these, these will impact the markets. Uh, when you take a look at some of these uh, inflation targets keep getting harder to hit. Obviously, that's going to impact the markets. And then you can break it down by region as well. Israel, Argentina, Venezuela, India. Econometrics. Okay, this is another big one a lot of people seem to ignore. These sort of things are very important. Um, government auctions, if, if there's not enough peep demand for, let's say, treasuries, boy, you got liquidity problems. Inflation, housing, employment, that's the stuff that I like to see. Um, you can see here we have ISM for manufacturing non-form productivity, uh, employment, um, factory orders, consumer confidence, and so on and so forth. Um, ISM, same thing. Okay. Click the... So I guess you can see the um, important stats here. Econometrics, very important. And again, that's all forward-looking, really important to understand that. Economic, econom, economic forecast. Now, I don't know who's the sources. If this is from Bloomberg themselves, I think it would be. Future trends. And this is what you use for your idea generation. Um, now, if any of this is public information, I'm on it. Here we got Bloomberg, Global economic forecasts, and, 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 and if you track and record and log all this as you go through your consumption, you get to see what the important stuff is, what it says, and where the markets will go based on that. Very important. Econom economic matrix. Okay, so this information you need to track on your own, I would imagine, and know where to go to grab it. That's what I'm building uh, some form of a database or ultimately some kind of spreadsheet on that, as explained in this uh, video. Uh, from there, uh, economic matrix. Now, this is good to have. You can get this from one location. Uh, TradingEconomics.com is very good at that. It gives you exactly all this and it breaks it down from one data source. So you can actually build out your um, uh, scripts. Python scripts for it to grab this sort of info. Statistics, same idea here. All of this can come from tradingeconomics.com. And then you, you could use this to figure out what to do when you get that information as it comes in. Combine it with other uh, anal analytical scripts to figure out patterns and figure out calls from that. Really, really useful. That's the whole idea. Um, indicator clicking to the chart compares unemployment numbers to new home sales. So this is what I'm talking about right here. This example as patterns. When you know exactly certain relationships, unemployment numbers to new home sales. So obviously that's, if you can, if you know for sure that there's some kind of direct or indirect relationship that you can um, uh, measure here, and you can even break it down by region. So you could probably, let's say, housing sales, certain housing uh, developers in each region will be impacted by this information and knowing these type of patterns. Just giving you hints. Maximize charts. Okay, fine. Now, this is really important. Again, I do believe um, there is a... Uh, a a website that will give you this information it would be really cool now this this is this visualization is proprietary to bloomberg so this will say okay for the us here's the number of trading partners that um, the us has by volume 
And knowing that that will help you understand when, let's say, China, or better yet, even Canada, because let's say oil, price of oil impacts the U.S., uh, because Canada will maybe export more oil to the U.S. Obviously, there's also what's going to impact that is currency um, differential and interest rates as well when, it, when you factor in the, the Fed. Okay, commodities. Now, this is where the trading part comes in because each country is going to provide commodities to these countries. Uh, classic examples, iron to China and Australia. Oh, sorry, Australian iron, Australian coal. A lot of commodities coming out of Australia is exported to China. And obviously, us, the Australian economy and, 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 and currency is dependent upon that relationship. So if you understand these future markets, option markets, understand these major commodities and, and the relationships there, you could do really well in both the futures market as well as the options market. And if you get these relationships right and under, really understand these patterns and you start moving into things like options, this is where you can really, really do really, really well. Okay. Okay, so we have West Texas Intermediate. This is for oil. How you can learn how contract trades, contract size, contract value. Man, now if you can get this information, and I do believe that you can get this information from IQ Feed, because you can get that um, as an option in your IQ Feed uh, options and futures uh, data if you subscribe to it. Okay, so pretty important stuff, as you can imagine. All right, so Bloomberg maps, I'm not sure, I mean, you know, to understand where shale is, weather and all that, that obviously will impact um, the markets. I think this is another world, uh, but you can see the, the factors they look at, um, weather, who's investing, how much is being invested, and they could break it down by uh, sector as an example. Seasonality, commodity curve, uh, some really good stuff here if you want to trade uh, commodities. So here we have Forex. Okay, you know, you hear about Forex traders and their stupid, stupid ways of going through some dinky, unregulated Forex broker. This is how you really should be trading Forex. Because it's these sort of things that impact directly with Forex. And again, I challenge any Forex traders to quantify why this is happening between these pairs. And they don't know. And this is why, this is what drives these Forex pair uh, relationships. Okay, so we have ticker finder, fine. Currency rates, world currency rates. Important, implied volatility matrix, cross-currency basis spreads. Again, this is for that correlation that I was talking about. Uh, strategy, workbench, dashboard, forecast, currency ranker is a really important one because let's face it, um, I think there's an example of that in this, and I'll show you that. You, you want to know about volatility, and uh, I do have scripts that show you that. Trading ideas, maybe, I don't know if those come from other people. Analyze uh I guess the exchange rate here between euro and US dollar, all quotes, option valuation, FX fixing, interest rate. Yes, interest rate's really important because when you think about it, if you, let's say, distinguish between euro, the ECB, euro, euro central bank, and then the Fed, what drives that relationship is how they view their economy, how they view what they need to do with the interest rate and other econometric things that will directly impact a relationship with another country. And not only that, it will also affect the, um, the country via trading, which again then impacts the futures market within that country and then the states as well. Just really important. Again, uh, First word, this is all the news. This impacts those relationships as well. Option risk analysis, very interesting. 
Okay, this is the important chart. Uh, these are the changes between the different major currencies, um, I guess in real time. But this one's the really important one. Okay. Provides comprehensive overview of foreign exchange, all allows you to access pricing data, news, and analytics. So here we have the spot uh, deposits, the spread, 10 year on, on the on the um, on the bonds of those countries, the spread of that, uh, basis points, the index, and the change on the equity indices. So you can see all these are interrelated in terms of as a relationship. U.S. dollar index, interesting. Uh, and, and this is all driven by these sort of things. News, obviously. Um, okay, so I don't know. You don't care about training. Professional. Webinars would be helpful. Obviously, postings. People search. And no, you won't find me on there. Supply chain analysis. This is another critical one. Blows a description on the supply chain analysis. And that all comes back to who, what country is trading with what, what kind of commodities are being traded. And that is directly impacting a, country, a company in that country based upon what they're importing from another country. I've given lots of examples there. Help desk we don't care about. Live help. Boom, boom, boom. Some other briefs, I guess. Okay, so that's the uh, analysis on this pretty good uh, overall training guide. Um, but there's more. Now, the cheating, the cheat sheet, another uh, document sent over. Uh, so you can get some ETF analysis as well, which was not mentioned. Um, we can also here get. Um, I can't remember what this was. I just can't remember what that was. ETF data. Uh, oh, let me just go back to that chart. So here we have ETF. Where did I go? Outstanding historical chart. So these are the volume of units for that particular ETF, I'd imagine. Uh, very interesting. Shares outstanding multi ETF. So these are the different ETFs available to you to who, who to invest in. You know, I just go to ETF DB and see who the biggest one is. I don't care about the smaller ones because usually the big ones are doing well. And when they do well, they're going to be the bigger ones as well. Just how it is on ETF ownership, I guess. Uh, if that's really useful. I guess it may be, but I don't know. Correlation grid. Okay, this is a really important one, as I said. EPI. I think these are symbols. Yeah, these are the symbols. Um, on correlation. Trading data, correlation. So... Just going through this uh, intraday candle chart again, just visualization stuff, which is important. Notice since here the fund, any trading of the same timeshares, spread charts. Okay, I'm sure there's some very good stuff in here. Uh, okay, so let me just show you some other areas. So I'll provide the links on where to download these from. Another one that was pretty cool were these other uh, PDFs from, I believe, Yale. Yeah, let's just open one up. Uh, so here we can see different things. Tools for the FX market. World trends, studies. Now remember, these are all going to be provided by other traders as well. Options, see where the option expires are for the NY. 
based on DCC data. I guess it's proprietary language. Twitter, I think. World interest probability. Communicate trade ideas. Econometric surprise. World interest rate probability. Very interesting. So allows to explore the probabilities implied by futures and options. Whisper calculator to see what users estimates the economic data releases. So here, you hear about these whisper rates. Um, that's typical because of the community within Bloomberg, which are obviously going to be high-powered traders, obviously. Econometric, um, leverage the ECO. The, 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 the calendars I've talked about. The studies. FX price, world trend. Wow, some very good stuff here. Volatility correlation analysis. <clears throat> Find rich, deep vol volatilities compared to historical averages. Volatility comparison, volatility surface. Change to the ATM RRBF option. Quick pricing tails. I guess that's statistical distributions, econometric. Forecast and rankings, FX. Cool. This is really good. Okay. Let's see what else. Foreign exchange key functions. Spot forward fixing. That's a key right there. Ford. FX forecast. These, I don't know who, who provides this. If it's uh, system generator analyst. Rank and compare currencies. SPDR reported trades. Wow, there's some really good stuff in here. Technical analyst. Okay. Well, I could, I could go on and on and on and on for this, but you probably realize there's no quantity stuff in here. Um, there may be in here that I'm not seeing it. Uh, but uh, I do believe uh, this is good stuff to work off of. Let's see. Uh, okay, so I just want to show you that. Hopefully, you can make some heads or, heads or tails out of it. I'm always looking for dialogue on this type of on this sort of stuff. If you got something, let me know. Talk to you later.